What's going on, everyone? Welcome back or to the Moto 411, and Daytona is now in the books. Let's talk about what happened tonight. For this video in particular, I only want to talk about the 450 class, what we saw tonight from them, and what we're going to be expecting moving forward with the 450 class. I'll talk about the 250 class and the SX Futures in another video later on this week, so please stay tuned for that. So without further ado, let's start talking. First and foremost, let's talk about Jet. He said multiple times tonight that it was going to be strictly business, and he surely backed up what he was saying. After passing Tomac and Sexton in basically the same corner early on in the race, Jet kind of just checked out from there. At one point during the race, he was about as far as like 12 seconds ahead of second place, and that's just making a statement, if you ask me. Jet made very minimal mistakes tonight. His pace was just unmatched. He had that one hiccup very near the end of the race, almost crashed, but he managed to stay on two wheels and then close it out. He was nothing short of dominant tonight, and if he continues this pace for the rest of the season, he's going to win the championship just straight up. Those point standings are really starting to shape up now. You're starting to see some guys who you thought maybe had a chance start to fall back uh, to, you know, the 20-plus points behind Mark. And that's where it starts getting to be like, you know, if, if those guys who are that far back in the points want to make a shot at this championship, it's now or never because Jet is on a different pace right now. He seems very cool, calm, and collected. He seems very focused. I've been saying it since the season started. Jet was my pick to win the championship if he stays healthy. So far, that's been the case. Knock on wood, of course. He's had a few hiccups here and there, but for the most part, I mean, Jet is, has a commanding lead over this championship at this point, and he's the guy to beat, straight up. So next, I want to talk about Sexton and Tomac. Man, those dudes were at it the whole race. Tomac was on Sexton, giving him pressure throughout basically the entire main event until he did manage passing Sexton uh, close near the end of the race. I can't even imagine what the intensity must have been like for those two guys being so close to each other throughout the whole the whole main event. It, it was really exciting to watch them battle. Uh, sadly, that was pretty much the most exciting part of the race. There really wasn't much going on because obviously Jet was out front and just kind of took off with it. Still some great racing tonight, nevertheless, and it's always a good time when Supercross is on. So next up, let's talk about Hunter Lawrence for a second. Uh, apparently he had a pretty bad crash. Uh, they did not show it on the broadcast, but they did show him with uh, his helmet bill off of his helmet, and he was off the side of the track. He ended up pulling off and being uh, DNFing the race, so that sucks for Hunter. And then I think HRC came out with a statement saying that Hunter has a shoulder, possible shoulder injury. They're going to get an MRI to look at it and see what's going on there, so... Let's hope Hunter's okay. Let's hope we see him next week. It's always it's never good when some of the heavy hitters get injured and taken out of the series because that reduces the excitement and the uh, parity that we could see in the racing. So I really hope Hunter's okay, and I'd like to see him back next week um, able to com contest these guys because he was looking solid the last two weeks. I believe he had a fifth and then uh, another either top five or close to top five finish, which would have been which were his best two finishes of the year so far. He started off kind of slow in the beginning of the year and started picking up pace. I assume getting, uh, you know, more used to that 450, getting a better bike setup that works for him. So real bummer to see Hunter crash out when he was uh, picking up some steam lately. And uh, like I said, I'd like to see him back next week. Next up, let's talk about Justin Barsha and Adam Cianciarulo. Talked about them a few days ago, saying that, uh, you know, I was going to hope that they would figure some things out. Hopefully they would be doing better, especially Cianciarulo once he came back from that finger injury, which he did today at Daytona. And both of them flopped tonight, went down a lap. Their best lap times were far off the pace of the rest of the guys out there, and it was just overall very disappointing for me. I'm a big fan of both of these guys, and to see them doing this poorly is really a bummer. I mean, Barsha, this has to be his worst season I think he's ever had in the Premier class. He's just been having just horrible results for him. I don't know what he's going to have to do to turn it around, but he's got to do something fast because that's just, quite frankly, unacceptable from someone with a top-level top, top level factory ride. I mean, he's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's up with Barsha. And uh, last but not least, just a funny little tidbit for you guys. If you watched the press conference, you may have saw Jet Lawrence flexing that Rolex. Can't blame him. He's got the money to have it. I know it is what it is. I just thought that was quite funny seeing him dust off the Roly in the middle of the interview. I'm sure we could do without the flexing, but uh, if Deegan and Dax are going to flex those Diamond Cubans, uh, he may as well flex the Roly, right? Those press conference live stream chats are absolutely toxic on another level they need to get someone to moderate those chats because it is it's the wild west out there it's <laughs> that 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 press conference chat is bad real bad hello everyone we like to take a moment and give our deepest condolences to jail archer's family and friends forever may he ride and rest in peace thank you for watching take care